In today's video, I'll be painting this adorable cow selfie portrait in acrylic. So if you'd like to see how this was done, stay tuned. As you can see, I've already painted the background. I used a mixture of several blues and white to achieve the background color. I did two coats to make sure the canvas was covered completely, but before my second coat dried, I took some darker blue and streaked it across the sky color and lightly blended it to create some interest in the sky so that it just didn't look so flat. I then drew out my cow using General's white charcoal pencil. I prefer to use the white charcoal pencil because it won't bleed through the layers of paint in the future, which can happen with other things like graphite and could ruin your painting, which would really be heartbreaking after you have spent several hours creating your, your masterpiece. So this painting has a limited palette uh, color palette. <clears throat> the colors I used were titanium white, transparent mixing white, unbleached titanium white, burnt sienna, burnt umber, quinacridone magenta, ivory black, mars black, and dioxazine purple. The purple was used only to mix with the Mars Black to give the shadows more depth. Uh, Mars Black alone can look a little flat, so to avoid that you can add some dark blue or purple to create more depth in your shadows. So all the paints I used were Liquitex Basics, which is a very good inexpensive paint, but it is more translucent than some of your more expensive brands. I like to paint in layers, so the more translucent paints play nicely with my painting style. When I started this painting, I did the traditional style uh, of blocking in the base color and then doing the details in the color represented in my reference photo. Oh, by the way, the reference photo for this painting came from Pixabay. Um, I will have everything listed below in the description area. So back to the painting. As I progressed through the painting, I changed my method up to doing glazing layers. And what I mean by that is I painted in the details with light colors, like unbleached titanium white, and then used a water to thin down the color, uh, the color I wanted for that area and glazed it on after the white was dry. I prefer this method over the traditional style. I just find it to be a little, a, a little faster because I can paint in all the details without having to worry about the color. Once the detail is done, I can then focus on the colors I want to use in that particular area. I, I do still have to go in with more opaque paint at the very end of the painting to tighten up the small details, but that is really the fun part of the painting to me and where I feel like the piece really starts to come together. So on this left side of the painting is the area that I did in the traditional style and as I move over to the right side, that's when I'm going to start doing more of the glazing. <clears throat> and you can see I rotate my paintings as I paint. Um, there's no reason to not put your canvas in a position that just makes it easier to get the strokes you want. And since the hair in her ears goes in several different directions, I like to shift the painting around just makes it a little easier.
And I'm missing a section of video here because my camera quit working. And when I went to do some research to find out why, I realized that it was over 10 years old. So I had to order a new one. Um, so during the time that it took Amazon to send me the new one, I had, you know, completed uh, part of the mouth and the tongue, which really kind of bummed me out because that's kind of the neat part of the painting. Now here you can see I'm, I'm glazing in color here. So I had painted her kind of more the color that's in the reference photo. And then I kind of hyped up the color saturation with some of that burnt sienna, which is one of my favorite colors. And so I <clears throat> just used a watered down version. You can also use mixing medium uh, as opposed to water. I just prefer the water. I like the way it feels better. So, but I use that to create that glaze. Now for the shadowed areas, as you can see, they, they aren't black. It's, it's a lighter, a lighter black so it's more of a dark brown and then I went back in and used a slightly lighter tone to do her wrinkles on her neck so that you could see those I'm just adding the highlights it's the only pure white that I used in the whole painting was for the highlights on her nose and on her tongue to make it look wet. And I'm just blocking in the body at this point and then I will go in with I used several different rake brushes for the fur um, I really like the rake brushes and the more you use them you know the more beat up the the bristles get kind of the better they really work so this is day three on this painting the first two days I only, I only painted on it a couple of hours and then I finished it up uh, in this session. I think overall I had five hours of footage and I think I'm missing about an hour, maybe two hours of footage. So maybe, you know, six or seven hours is what it took for me uh, to complete this. So I'm going back in and kind of glazing in some more color. And this is the area where I'm just finishing up the details and kind of tightening everything up. This is the part I really enjoy. And you want to make sure that your, your highlights are there and that you've got the contrast needed so your painting doesn't look flat. making sure your color saturation is where you want it. These are the little details that make the painting kind of pop. And 
and you want to make sure that you're stepping back at least six feet from your painting and looking it over and making sure that everything looks good because you kind of get into this tunnel vision and you're not when you're sitting right on top of your painting you're not you're not seeing everything and most paintings when they're hung on a wall are viewed about six feet away because of furniture being in front of it on a wall so that's how far you want to get away and everything looks a lot different once you step back away from that painting I'm just adding some highlights to the ear tags. And the ear tags were painted with, uh, oh, that okra. Why can't I think of what it's called? gosh yellow okra okra is it is that what it's called yellow why do I feel like that's not even what it's called yellow ochre or yellow oxide is another term or another color that's very similar I don't think I had that uh, listed in the beginning because I really only used that yellow color for the ear tags we are coming to the end of this painting I hope you enjoyed this video please leave me a comment on what you'd like to see me paint next also make sure to hit like and subscribe and don't forget to click the bell icon so you will be notified every time I upload a new video Thank you for watching. I hope to see you for the next video.